we're gonna start playing at Gardens Casino. Most precisely the 5510 game with the bounty button on. And if you don't know what is the bounty button, it's a pretty interesting game. We started playing regular 5-5-10 and the first hand I see Ace-10 suited on the middle blind. One limper and small blind raises to $70. Small blind was a 40 to 50 year old guy that I didn't have any information about him besides the one I just told you so. And here I could go either with a 3-bet or a call. And in this case, I decided to call and see a flop. Other two players call and we see a flop of Ace, King, Jack, all spades. I got top pair with a decent kicker. I also got a gut shot. Small blind C bets $300, which is a little more than a pot sized bet. Pretty weird sizing. Here a call would be completely fine. Actually, I'm gonna call the vast majority of the times in this spot. But in this particular time, I just felt I was behind. I gotta say that there will be many times that I'm gonna be ahead, but he's gonna have a flush draw and a gut shot or a pair and a flush draw and that would give him like 40% equity. I was losing for ace king, ace queen, ace jack, king jack, jacks, kings, and all those hands are in his range. So in this particular hand, I decided to fold, and this is what he said after I folded. Eight only, no spin, no spin. Oh, king only. Next hand is a bomb pot, and I see king eight offsuit in a flop that comes king five queen with two spades. Check, 75. I check in a young player who seemed to be decent, which is nothing to be honest for now because that's just a guess. Bet $75. Everybody folds and I'm the only one who called. We go heads up to a turn that comes a seven of spades. Now flush gets there. I check to him again and now he decides to quickly check back. River was another spade. Very bad run out for me. Now by the way he played, I don't think he had a big spade. Otherwise, I really think he would bet again on the turn, representing a flush and having a semi-bluff with the flush draw with a big spade. And I could have plenty of spades here, check calling flop and checking turn. So here, even though I have a pretty decent showdown value and most of the times I'm just gonna check and try to get to the showdown. In this particular case, I decided to represent a big spade. So I decided to make a pot-sized bet of $320. He quickly folds and we win this hand. Show block, please. Wasn't for me this yeah. right now. Next hand I get 6-7 suited on the small blind. Two limpers and now the bounty game is on. And basically the bounty game works like this. If you win a hand, you receive the bounty button. And if you win the next hand when you have the bounty button with you, you will receive $25 from each player at the table. And in this case, as there was 7 players, you would receive $25 from each of the players the six players that are praying versus you. So if you have the bounty button, there is $150 more in the pot only for you. So that's gonna incentivize you to try to win this pot more often because there's more money in this pot for you. And in this hand, there are two limpers and one of the limpers is the player that has the bounty button in this round. I decided to squeeze here for $80 from the small blind. Only cut off who has the bounty button decides to call. And I believe his range is gonna be pretty wide here cause he is in position and he has the bounty button. Effective stack is $1,000 and the flop comes six for deuce with two diamonds. I got top pair with a seven kicker. I'm gonna see bet here to protect my equity. But even though usually I would see bet something like 40% of the pot here, because he has the bounty button, again, he has $150 more in the pot. So I should see bet a little larger counting with this information. So I see bet to $100, little more than half pot. Cut off calls and we go heads up to the turn that comes a jack of hearts. That's pretty much a blank, unless he has something like what? King jack? Queen jack? Because ace jack he would raise, king jack he would raise, queen jack he would raise. Like, this jack is a... Pretty big blank, to be honest. I still think I'm winning here most of the times, but I'm still going versus many outs. If he has two overs, for example, he's going to six outs. So I should bet here again to protect my equity. And even though there is 385 in the pot, he has 150 more because of the bounty. So I decided to bet 300. If he has me crushed, congrats. He folds and we win this hand. Bro, this game adds a lot of context. Next hand I get ace queen offsuit from the cutoff. It falls to me and I open race to 35. Branson, who has the bounty button and has like 
Less than 500 in his stack shoves all in. It falls to me and I call. And by Branson's reaction, uh, he doesn't look like he's that good. Uh, yeah. Open a vlog, bro. yeah, bro, that's what a bounty does. Let's show, let's show. Yeah. Yeah, call. That's what the. <laughs> In the end, I win. I really didn't want to win a sizable pot versus Branson, but it happens. In the exact next hand, in which I have the bounty button, I see a skin offsuit from the button. Under the gun raises to 35, plus one, three bets to 110. I got a skin offsuit in this hand. And I just have to 3 bet here, there's no other option for me. And because other player stack is around 900, 800, 1000, I decided to put them all in. I'm all in. Only player in the other side of the table calls, which by the way, he was a really cool guy, really funny, like he had a great presence in the table. We agreed to run it twice and he shows pocket queens, which is close to a flip, but not exactly. With ace king, I have a little more than 43% equity. If I win this hand, I will get the pot plus 25 from each player at the table. It doesn't get more coin flip than this though. It doesn't I just want the first one for my friends. I just want the first one for my friends. First one, first, first one. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> All the table was rooting for the person that didn't have the bounty button. He already hits a queen in the second board, so I lost both. Next hand is a bomb pot. I'm in the middle position with ace six offsuit. Flop comes ace queen jack rainbow. I got top pair. I decide to bet half pot for $100. Honestly, I don't like this play. If I had to bet here, I would rather betting smaller, like a third. But checking would be a fine option as well. But I bet, cut off and early position call, so we go three ways to the turn, which comes another six. Now I got two pair. Early position checks to me and I'm gonna bet again. I bet 200, 40% of the pot. Both players call again. I got little less than $700 in my stack and the pot has 1100. It checks to me, there is one player to act after me, which is that gentleman in the other side of the table. And here, I could either go with betting or checking. I believe if I shove all in, I might get called most of the times by hands that are better than mine, but it's a hard spot at the same time, cause I feel like checking would be too slow of a play, cause I still think I can get value from other hands. So in the end, I decide to bet 350 and in case someone shoves, I'm gonna fold. So I decided to bet fold this hand. 350, 350. Button thinks for a while and calls. Early position folds. I got two pair. Button says he has the nuts. So we won't take down this one because he shows king 10 of clubs and we lose this hand. Next hand, I have the bounty button and I see 8-4 offsuit in a bomb pot. Flop comes ace, eight, seven, rainbow. There are seven players in the hand. They all check to me and I decide to bet here. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what I wanted to achieve here by betting this flop versus other six players. I feel like the best play is checking back, but I did it. Oh, Jack, in the other side of the table, re-raises to 280. It happened exactly what I didn't want it to happen. Someone check raised me big, but I have the bounty button. I'm gonna call at least once and see a turn. Turn again, a little bit more equity. It comes the five of spades. Now any six gives me a straight. Low jack shoves all in for 600. I gotta call 600 for a pot that will have almost $2,000 plus the $25 from each. So the pot will have little less than $2,200. For this call to be profitable, my average equity has to be a little more than 28% because of the bounty button. There is a relevant chance I'm playing for the four, for the six and for the eight. And that would give me nine outs. But out of those nine outs, maybe some of them he has or it's good for him as well. So let's say I have in average seven outs, but seven outs for the river would be roughly 14% of chance. So unless I'm winning this hand, if I call to hit an eight, a six or a four, that would be an unprofitable call. And in the end, I decided to call. We agreed to run it twice and he shows a six. So I was playing only for an eight or for a six. So five outs, it was a very unprofitable call. The best play was folding and we lose this hand. 
Next and last hand of this particular session. I have 900 in my stack and I see pocket jacks on the middle blind. Early position has the bounty button. Small blind, three bets to 200. This play shows a lot of strength from small blind, but I'm not gonna fold jacks here. I will either shove all in or call. And in this particular case, I decided to call my jacks for $200. Bounty button shoves all in. Small blind quickly calls. And here, I believe I could find a fold, to be honest. They will have many ace king, ace queen, and jacks plus. Maybe some of them will have tens, but most of the times, they will either have hands that were flipping or hands that are dominating me and crushing me. But I was kind of tilted. I was kind of impatient. I saw jacks and I said, you know what? In this bounty game, the bounty button shoved. I'm not gonna fold jacks, so I'm gonna call here and let's see what happens. I call, three players all in. The board is all low cards. Small blind shows kings. I show jacks. Bounty button said he had the third best hand, so jacks was ahead of him. And we lose this one. And after being completely crushed in this bounty game, I decided to stack my chips and get out. The other day I came to a private game in a place located close to Orange County. I heard it would be a half Omaha, half No Limit Hold'em game. So I decided to do something different and come to make a vlog here of Omaha. In the first relevant hand in this table, I see Ace King 10 8 suited from the small blind. Cutoff, who is the owner of the game, open raises to $30. Button calls. I call. Other player call and four players see a flop of Jack Queen 3 Rainbow. I got a big wrap here. I'm playing for the 9, for the 10, for the king, and for the ace. I check. Owner of the game in the cutoff, C bets to $100. And here I decided to check raise pots. I was playing pretty tight and I have a semi bluff and if I check raise here I'm gonna represent a lot of strength and people will think I have a great hand while I have a great rap so in case someone calls me I still have outs to get a great hand. So I raise pot for $420, two players fold but owner of the game started to think for a long time. He seemed to be a pretty smart guy. And I was indeed playing tight, so this check raise represents a lot of strength for me. I could have jacks and queens. He didn't know I was who I was. If he did, he would realize I could be with a semi bluff here, which is what I have. He kept thinking for a long time. <laughs> But after something like 3 minutes, he decided to shove all in, and I call. He says he has pocket jacks, so he thought for this long with pocket jacks. So you can see how was my image at that table for that guy. He really thought about folding pocket jacks, which the only hands that he was losing was pocket queens. So I don't regret check raising this flop, because if he thought about folding jacks, if he had something like Two pair, he would fold right away, most likely. We agreed to run it twice. I miss both run outs. He shows pocket jacks and wins the hand. That was my equity versus pocket jacks. I had 40%. So even in this worst case scenario, I still had 40% equity. So this play was pretty good. I almost made him fold and I would make him fold a lot of stuff. And in the end, we lose this hand. Next hand, I see the first pocket aces of the night. Just as a spoiler, this is not be the last one. I get ace, ace, king, seven suited with the diamond. I'm on the button, two limpers before me. The game is 1025 already. I raise pot. The pot should be 135 now, but dealer said 150, so okay, 150. Both limpers call, three players see the flop. Which comes a good one, seven deuce, deuce, rainbow. Unless some of them has a deuce or seven, seven, I am winning this hand. So they check to me, I got 850 in my stack and I believe the best play here is bet again. So I bet pot again and hope not to see none of them calling. Otherwise, most likely they have a deuce or a seven. First player folds, second player in the cutoff shows all in. And I'm committed already, so I call. He said he has the deuce, so I'm in a pretty bad shape already. We agreed to run it twice. I actually make a runner runner flush in the first board and we chop this hand. I got lucky, sometimes that happens with us. I was in a terrible shape in this flop. I had 20% equity, but I got there 
and we chop this hand. Next hand, I see Ace King Jack Four double suited, three limpers before me. I'm on the big blind, and I knew that my image was of a very tight guy, so I decided to raise pot here because I knew that most people would give me aces, which I didn't have at this time, but I had a pretty good hand. Ace King Jack Four double suited, so I raised pot. The pot was supposed to be 160, but the dealer said 200, and I made it 200. Four players called. There is a thousand dollars in the pot, and I got little more than 800 behind. So SPR is little less than one. I could see that most of them thought I had aces. So in the flop comes Ace Queen Nine. I'm gonna represent aces here and just shove all in. So that's what I did. I shoved all in for 850. They all quickly fold, and I won this hand. Next hand, I'm in the small blind, and I see pocket aces again. Early position raises 50, one caller. I decided to call here from the small blind instead of raising pot, otherwise they would give me aces again, which I have this time. So I called, and thankfully Limper did exactly what we wanted him to do. He re-raised it to $100, two players called, and now I'm in a great spot to re-raise. I got a thousand dollars in my stack. If I bought that pot here, it will be really close to all in. And when I have aces, I'm ahead of pretty much any other combination they might have. So I raised pot. The pot should be 475, but dealer said it was 550 and I respect it. I raised to $550. Early position and button call. So three players see the flop and I have 650 left in my stack. So I just want to see a safe flop and shove all in, which is not what comes. It comes Jack, Jack, three. In case any of them has a Jack, I'm behind, but SPR is already really oh. small and I just got to shove and hopefully they won't have any Jacks. I shove all in for 650. Early position shoves all in for 1500 and button snap calls. So most likely some of them or both of them has a Jack and that's exactly what happened. Both of them had a jack, so I'm in a terrible shape again. There is $5,500 in the pot. Both runouts doesn't help me, and in the end, I lose again. And I rebought again for $1,000, and the exact next hand, the exact next hand, I see pocket aces again. There are four leapers before me, and I'm in the button. I raised pot. It was supposed to be 185, but dealer said it was 225. I don't know if the dealer doesn't know how to count the pots, or if he just wants the game to be more expensive. But I raised 225. I got $1,000 total in my stack. Two players call, so three players see the flop, which comes seven, six deuce with two spades. I got no spade in my hand. High Jack, who was a good player, leads $500. And here I have roughly 780 in my stack and he bets 500. I don't think he will have sevens and sixes so often. Deuces I'm blocking, so it's less likely for him to have a set of deuces as well. And I feel like he can have a semi bluff, a wrap or something like that. And here, if I would shove all in for 780 for a pot that has roughly 1500 when he calls, my average equity would have to be roughly 30% around that. And I think I will have 30% pretty often here or more. So I'm not feeling like folding. I have some runner runner possibilities as well. Like two clubs can come and I have the flush with the club. It can come an ace, it can come a nine, it can come a deuce. And I feel like I have enough odds to go here. Most of the times, most people will just fold this hand, I know, but I don't think I have such a bad price here, and this flop is not so bad for aces. That guy was a good player, and I think he would lead with many semi-bluffs, which I would have enough equity to call. So I decided to take my chances and shove all in for 790. He calls, we agreed to run it twice, and he shows 6 jack, king, 5, so he had a pair and a flush draw. My equity was 37%, so in the end the call was good. But in the end, both boards didn't help me. And after this hand, I decided to book this loss and talk to you guys about what was passing through my head. What's up guys, I even came outside to talk to you here because it's very noisy inside. But man, what can I do? Like, I chosen to come to a private game that I played my best. I believe I played well, to be honest, and lost. 3630 in like 
three hours and a half of game because I ran like shit in a 1025 Omaha. What can I learn from that? I believe one of the things I can learn is that if I play 1025, I better be ready to lose 150 big blinds in this game. That That's what I lost, like even less than 150 big blinds. But man, I'm starting to be used to it. Like you lose a lot, you win a lot, you lose a lot, you win a lot, but you do your best to win way more than you lose. So that's what I'm doing. I'm still very much up. I still have a great result in this trip. So man, like <laughs> in the end, I lost today and there's nothing of things I can learn from it, but I believe I played well. I believe I played what I can play at home, Omaha because I'm not the best player on Omaha, but with my game, I believe it was okay. And this is going to be the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to the channel. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, there are plenty others that you also enjoy as well. Just click any of those options in the screen. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time.